Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video we are going to build this thing that I really don't know what to call. Maybe the Mac Sniffer? But anyway, the name is not that important. What I really want to do is share this extremely niche project that I did. And the main reason is that I hope at least someone else will find this useful. So if at least one person finds this project useful and it solves the problem that they have, then this video was worth making. So let me explain what is going on. A while back, a friend of mine mentioned that they have a problem, or not even a problem, but more of a grievance with certain steps in their workflow that they have on a production floor. And it's one of those problems that it's not really a top priority or even worth investing a lot of resources to solve, but it still just bugs you every day, which is coincidentally the perfect inspiration for a lot of my projects. Now, without revealing too much unnecessary or potentially private information, I will just say that this is a very specific problem that is related to their use case, and here is the gist of it. At various steps, the network MAC address of the device needs to be read or confirmed. This could be for tracking, verification, identification, or any other purpose. Unfortunately, often the network MAC address is not printed anywhere on these devices that they have to use. Now, when you need to read the MAC address of your laptop, PC, or network equipment, and it's not printed anywhere on the device, there are many ways to get it. First thing that comes to mind is just plug it onto the network, look at your DHCP server, and see which MAC address did the device report. Or alternatively, you would just log into the device and use one of many tools available in the OS to read the device MAC address. But here is where the grievance begins. To do either of these, we would need to set up an isolated network on the production floor and set up a DHCP server. Then we would need to train people on how to access the DHCP leases and pull the MAC address from there, or spend time automating these steps. Or alternatively, we would need a scenario where an OS is already installed on this machine and we would be able to log into the machine to pull the MAC address. And obviously, again, we would need to train people on how to do this or spend time automating these steps. Again, as I mentioned, this is a very niche problem that they have, but maybe to generalize it a bit. Let's assume that we need to read the network MAC address of a device, but there is a problem. What if we don't have access to the network or can't access the DHCP server? Maybe we have a device that we don't have permission to plug into the network, or we are not comfortable connecting it to our network. Or maybe the device does not have an OS installed or we don't have access to it. Obviously, this is basically the same as saying how to read the MAC address of the device that is not on our network and we don't have access to its OS. Now, let's skip the obvious question of why would anyone ever be in this weird situation. But if you have examples, feel free to leave them in the comments. And before we start solutioning this, we will add three additional constraints, just to make this project even more fun. Our additional constraints are going to be, we do not want to use any custom electronics or specialized tools. The final solution needs to be reasonably cheap and easy to build with stuff that you can get off the shelf. And this tool needs to be simple to use, completely standalone, and plug and play which means it does not require a PC, laptop, Wi-Fi, automation, or any of the cool stuff that we usually do on this channel. So with that said, let's jump into our solution and see how it will all work. For this project, we will need only two off-the-shelf parts. First is this development board that has WizNet W5500 Ethernet controller and the Raspberry Pi Pico 2040 microcontroller. This will basically do everything that we need in order to read the device MAC address. And the second part is this OLED display that we will use to display human-readable MAC address and machine-readable QR code. And that's it! Those are all the parts that we will need. Before we continue, just two quick side notes. You could use the development board without the display and print the MAC address over USB, but that conflicts with our project constraints, so that is why we have added the display. The second note is that you could replicate this with almost any Ethernet controller and almost any microcontroller. The main reason why I have decided to use this combination is because Raspberry Pi Pico can be programmed over USB and it does not require special tools or programmers, which makes it super easy for anyone to replicate. It also supports MicroPython, which is super easy for anyone to understand and modify the code. And last reason is obviously because I already had this development board available. 
Okay, now that we have selected our parts, let's see how this is going to work. The solution is actually ridiculously simple. We are going to leverage a very cool feature of the DHCP protocol. In particular, we will leverage the DHCP broadcast query that device sends when it connects to the network. So when a computer or other device connects to a network, it will send a DHCP broadcast query requesting the necessary information. This basically means that when the device connects to the network, it will essentially yell on the network, hey, I'm new here, can the DHCP server assign a spot for me on this network? And the DHCP server on your network will pick up this request and communicate with the device until it's all set up and ready to go. This may sound very simple on the surface, but there are a lot of things going on, especially as your network grows or becomes more complex. But luckily for this project, we need to focus only on the first part, which is picking up the DHCP broadcast query. This is because in this packet that the device sends whenever it connects to the network, it has to include some of its own information, including its own MAC address. And obviously, this is the information that we have been looking for all along, so we just need to pick it up. So now that we know what we want to do, we will program our development board to listen for DHCP broadcast queries. Then when it receives one, it will parse the provided information and extract the MAC address. And finally, display that MAC address on the screen as human readable text and as a QR code. And now let's demonstrate how it all works. When the MAC sniffer powers up, it will initialize and then wait for Ethernet connection. I will connect this Raspberry Pi to the MAC sniffer using the Ethernet cable. Then I will power up the Raspberry Pi. We can see now that the MAC sniffer has detected that the Ethernet cable is connected and now it's listening for DHCP broadcast query. When the Raspberry Pi powers up, it will send a DHCP broadcast query onto the network, which is essentially just our MAC sniffer board. The request will get picked up, parsed and finally we can see the device MAC address on the screen. The nice thing is that if the device supports Netboot, it will send the DHCP broadcast query even if there is no OS installed. For example, here I have this PC that has no storage device and therefore it does not have an OS installed, except technically BIOS, but you get the point. But I can still plug it into the Mac sniffer, power it up, and we will be able to read its MAC address. This is because during Netboot, the device will send a DHCP broadcast query that we can pick up. And that's pretty much it. Now you can scan the barcode with a QR scanner to automate things or read the address from the display to confirm that you have the correct device. I know this is a very niche project and maybe not a lot of people will find it useful, but I built this to help a friend. This solved some of the grievances that they had on the production floor and as a bonus, I had a lot of fun making this project. And I hope that at least someone else also finds this useful or at least interesting. And with that said, if you did find this video interesting, please consider sharing and liking this video, and maybe subscribing to my channel, it really helps a lot. That's all for today's video, if you have reached this part of the video, thank you, you're amazing. Thank you all for watching, my name is Sasha, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!